Hello, everyone. Welcome to Match a Resident. You may notice me as your IMG podcast host, Tiffany. So welcome. Today, we are still celebrating our match success stories. And so today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Hamad Malik. How are you, Dr. Malik? I'm very well. Thank you so much for asking, Tiffany. It's so nice to speak with you. Thank you so much for being on the show. So, you know, I always start my interviews with this question. One, congratulations on matching. Thank you. Number two, tell me how you feel now that you know that the residency application process is over. Oh, so relieved. I am so, so grateful. And one of my colleagues was even telling me that I have escaped from the NRMP forever because my program is an integrated program. So I don't have to worry about fellowships either. So I'm really, so, I'm so grateful and I'm so happy that thank God this is all taken oh care of. Oh my goodness. I want to say you're lucky, but honestly, you put in all this hard work. So it's well deserving. So that's thank awesome. You. Congratulations. And sorry, NRMP, you won't be getting Dr. Malik again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I also asked this question of all my guests as well. Tell me one interesting thing about yourself that no one would probably know just by looking at you. Hmm. My free time, I absolutely love to go volunteering in soup kitchens, charities, uh -huh. and it's one of my favorite things to do. I started doing this since I was, I think, probably in middle school. My parents mm -hmm. would take us to, you know, go distribute food around the homeless shelters and stuff like that. Then it continued on to in medical school, then really? it continued on in residency, and I'm just so fortunate to have had that part of me growing up, and it's a part of me now whenever I get free time. I go to the homeless okay. shelters, I volunteer, and it's something that I love to do, specifically cooking and serving the less fortunate. So I love doing that. Well, that's nice. I mean, that is a fun fact, but that's also very altruistic of you. So that's amazing. Thank you so much. I'm pretty sure your community also appreciates you as well. So if you don't mind, now let's learn a little bit more about you from a professional standpoint. So um, one, if you can let my audience know if you are a U.S. or a non-U.S. IMG, let us know where you went to medical school and why you chose that location. Absolutely. So I am a non-U.S. IMG. I was born and raised in Lahore, Pakistan. I completed all my education from there. I went to high school, college, and then medical school all in Lahore, Pakistan. Okay. I've been very fortunate to have been accepted into the Combined Military Hospital Lahore. It's a, one of the one of the most prestigious universities in Lahore. I'm very grateful for that. Mm. And after I finished my medical school, I was very, very fortunate to get accepted into a research program where I did a clinical research in the Department of Radiology at Interventional Radiology at the Mayo Clinic. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. And after that, I applied for residency and, you know, thank God, hopefully wow. made it. So let me ask you this. So I also asked my non-US IMGs this question. Did you have, was there any issues or how was like the visa process for you in terms of gaining clinical experience in the US? Did you have any issues with that or was it pretty seamless for you? Well, so I think it helps that if you have a good travel history. So my, my family and I, we've been visiting our family members here in the US since 2008. So okay. we would get the travel visas, you know, built a lot of history. My family and I love to travel as well. So just having that good history of having regular travels outside the, you know, your home country to the United States regularly builds a good history. So we've never had issues with visa rejections, never had issues with visa, you know, ever mm -hmm. being delayed or anything like that. So that was something which I never, I'm very fortunate, never had mm -hmm. to worry about. No, thank you so much for sharing that, um, because I know some people do have issues, but I, I didn't really realize about the travel history. So thanks for, for um, sharing that information. Um, so, you know, I always say this about my IMGs as well, because I love you all out there. Um, I believe that every story is unique, especially your journey to residency. So tell me what makes your story so unique. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it just comes around from the fact that this isn't something like, you know, medical school and then research and then you know straight up applied got in yay it was a very very tough and arduous journey and mm -hmm. you know after medical school I was very fortunate to get into a research program and that too was a challenge in itself because as many IMGs like myself 
try to gain more experience, you know, build, uh, bulk up their CV or those who don't have clinical experience like I did, because I only had one month of rotation prior to my path to interventional okay. radiology. So it was very challenging. I took the support of research, but finding a research position was very, very challenging. I had to email hundreds, of really hundreds of professors every day. My morning routine would be wake up, have a cup of coffee, and then just start emailing every day, <laughs> really? every day, just email. And it really helps to, you know, email them and just keep, keep, you know, being hopeful because a lot of rejections did come. It did make me feel a bit, you know, disheartened, but mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. You have to remain hopeful throughout this entire journey. And I think that was one of the biggest things in the beginning to overcome. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, moving on to once I got the research, then finding, this is what I believe is the most important thing, Tiffany, the mm -hmm. right mentor to guide you. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, so your story is um, crazy. So like one thing I can get from you was persistence. Okay. Um, making sure you get up every morning and send out those emails. And, you know, I understand rejection as well, um, but you have to keep pushing. Right. Um, so tell me about your mentor. Yeah. So I'm very fortunate to have had a wonderful group of mentors who have mentored me over the past two, three years. But, you know, it's, that, it's not always, you know, you find the one mentor and he's the, he or she is the best fit mentor. You have to find different mentors best suited to your skill set. So often at times when we come here as, you know, research scholars to participate in research or clinical electives, we only interact with one or two you know, professors during our rotations, or maybe one or two if we're fortunate during our research programs, and they are very wonderful. But sometimes professors, you know, don't really understand the challenges that lie ahead for an international graduate. They think right. that if you have good scores, you have experience, you get a few good papers, you will match. And with the match becoming more and more competitive with the online applications, and, you know, you don't have to travel or everyone step one step one being pass and fail it's getting more and more hard for everyone to have an equal laying field mm -hmm. so it's very very important to have someone who knows the system who mm -hmm. can vouch for you and who has worked with prior international graduates so i think that's something very very important and apart mm -hmm. from that one of the most important qualities in a right mentor is approachability because as international graduates when we come here you know, we're very afraid. We don't know what's going on. We're just trying to navigate this journey, asking colleagues and people around us, you know, help us, guide us. And having a mentor who's approachable, like who calls you to check up on you or asks you like, hey, how are you doing? How's work coming along? How is everything going? Mm -hmm. And, you know, just supports you. Don't worry. I got you. I'm going to help you out. And, you know, goes to bat for you. I think that's something that really, really makes a difference. And mm -hmm. it's not easy to find the right mentor. I don't think the first mentor you find is the right mentor. And not to say that mm -hmm. every mentor has its, you know, have their own, you know, unique perspectives to give. But I really think that having a group of mentors and connecting with multiple different people is perhaps the best way to really find the best fit mentor. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um one piece of advice I would give my audience out there, just as Dr. Malik was saying, is it may take more than one. So, you know, once you start that journey, you want to start immediately going out there and, you know, putting yourself out there as well, right? I mean, it's, I think it's, it can be intimidating. I get that, especially if you're coming from like, you know, a foreign country or you're coming from, you know, somewhere where you haven't been before. Speaking of, um, tell me about your residency location. You don't have to say specifically where you're going unless you want to, but is the location you're going somewhere that you've been before? Is it going to be familiar to you or is it going to be a totally new environment? And how are you preparing for that? Absolutely. So my uh, location, which I'm very happy and excited to share is that I'm going to be continuing, continuing my residency in interventional radiology at the Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center in New Hampshire. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That's awesome. So you're pretty familiar with the setting. So it's kind of going to be like, you can just kind of transition in pretty easily, right? Absolutely. That is awesome. So I'm, like, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. That's great. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. I was very surprised and I was taken aback that to find out that, wow, I've matched here. I did not believe it. I'm very, very fortunate. Thank God. Thank my family. Thank my mentors, my wonderful friends, everyone who supported me. So I'm very, very fortunate for this. Yeah. And 
Yeah, it's going to be an a, you know interesting transition because I am in Massachusetts right now, and New Hampshire is just you know an hour and a half, two hours away, mm -hmm. and I have seen the campus before, and it is absolutely beautiful. So I'm very very fortunate and you know excited to go there. Right. Amazing, amazing. Congratulations. That's a good program. So I'm very proud of you and be proud of yourself as well. Um, and I'm pretty sure your family and friends are also very proud of you. So shout out to them as well. Um, so let's get into this right here. What is your most memorable? And I always say it could be good, bad, or an indifferent um, opinion about the residency application process. <laughs> what is the most memorable thing for you? Uh... I think waiting for interviews. I think that's you know the biggest thing because once you submit your application, you're just like okay now you wait, and then you don't know when it's going to stop coming, when it's going to come, and if it's you know something that's actually you know promising or not because you can get interviewed from programs and then you know they they never have any intention of inter ranking you or you know they may not be as familiar with the complete aspects of the residency application so. Sometimes, you know, it's very, very challenging to gauge how interested a program is in you. And I think that's just something that comes with research, talking to colleagues, and then finding out if they have a history of taking international graduates prior or, you know, it's just mm -hmm. a really wonderful opportunity to learn about them, but can be very daunting as well. So let me follow up with that. How many, how many interviews did you get? And also, did you have virtual or in-person or was it a combination of both for you? Absolutely. So um, also full disclosure, Tiffany, I did apply for the match twice. In the first year, I did not match. I was only able to secure a preliminary position. And then during my second year, while I was in my preliminary year, I applied again. And that's when I matched in my advanced program of DART. Thank you for being transparent about that. I think that's very important for my audience to know out there because unfortunately, there are some this year that did not match. So oh. you are a, a testament of perseverance. So that's thank you for sharing that. Of course, there is no, absolutely no shame in any of the candidates. I know it's extremely heartbreaking when you find that email. I have been in your shoes. I remember that email last year, March 14, 2022, 9 o'clock. I was in uh, Midwest, so it was nine o'clock for me. Um, extremely disappointing, very, very heartbreaking email. And I think just knowing that better things lie ahead and just trusting in yourself that you will persevere, you will get through this. That is perhaps the most important piece of information and advice I can give to anyone who comes across this and everyone. Please, please do not give up. Do not feel like you have failed. I promise you it will be all right. You just have to make sure you find the right people who are going to be there for you. Oh, my goodness. That was amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for, for being encouraging to, to all of my IMG, IMGs out there. Um, so how was the interview process for you? Was it um, pretty seamless? I mean... Because I, I interviewed someone before and all of their interviews were virtual. So I haven't met anyone oh, yet. Yeah. No, I've done, I, I did, um, I did both of my interview cycles uh, virtual as well. So the, my, the first year I interviewed, I interviewed at um, 10 radiology programs and I felt very confident and I thought that it's going to be a good year, but it was a very, very challenging year. And this year is also very challenging, but last year, I think it just comes down to the mentors and, you know, not not engaging with the programs, knowing which ones are very interested in you or, you know, location is also something I've learned, Tiffany, that plays a very significant factor into this. Mm -hmm. So that's also something that, you know, I didn't know before. But uh, last year I had 10 interviews. This year I had somewhat close as well. So it was more so this year just being more, you know, authentic, true to yourself, not focusing on making yourself the perfect candidate, but more so highlighting your true qualities and the things that you truly believe in rather than just trying to get a position. Because in, in, as an international graduate, we're all really focused on just matching, getting, the, getting a spot rather than the spot that is the best fit for us. And we often don't understand this word, the best fit. Mm -hmm. It's not until you realize that you have strengths and you have individual characteristics that you bring to a program. Never let this get away from you. Don't understand, don't undermine the fact that you're not a small cog in any residency program. You bring a wonderful set of traits, characteristics, abilities, strengths, and even talents to any mm -hmm. program. And you shouldn't have to settle for, you know, anything less. I do understand that it's anxious, it's nerve wracking when you have limited interviews, but trust me, having gone through the process myself, 
where I was willing to, you know, accept any program that takes me or just be happy that, you know, I got an interview to matching at one of the one of the most top programs, an Ivy League University hospital in my second time applying. I can mm -hmm. safely say that your self-worth comes from within. And when you are not afraid to highlight the qualities and be honest with programs, that's when you know you found a program worth going to and they value you and you're going to be an excellent, fantastic resident. That was amazing. Thank you for that answer. Um, you know, and, and you're right. There are some out there who will give you the advice, take the first thing you get. Um, but then there are some who's like, you know, I really have to sit and reflect, is this going to be a perfect fit for me? Because I'm going to be starting my life here, right? And so you're going to be committed to being there for at least three or four years, right? And you may end up being where you live forever, right? Maybe where you're going to start your career. Um, mm -hmm. So I always say to be authentic to yourself. Um, and of course, you know, it is, it is competitive in general to like apply for residency. So what sets you apart aside from your own talent is going to be what you can bring to a program, right? Mm -hmm. So I absolutely, absolutely agree with that. And so this is my last question. This has been an amazing interview. And honestly, you've been encouraging this entire time. Um, but if I, if you could offer one last piece of advice to our IMGs out there who are going to be applying for this next season, because the season's literally about to start <laughs> soon in the next yeah. couple of months. So what, what advice could you give them to prepare for, for residency? Well, Tiffany, I want to say that only one thing worked, but no, there's no secret formula. It's a combination of things, and I will try to summarize it in the best way possible. I think the first most important thing is to definitely put in the effort. Be sure that you are active in your efforts. Don't think that just because you have good scores and you have a few rotations, you're going to get by. You are competing against a lot of students who are amazing, excellent, and just as, if not, you know, more talented than you. So keep that in mind. And at the end of the day, you have to work hard. As an international graduate, you're gonna have some difficulties to face. So you should keep that in the back of your mind. Secondly, you know, definitely be active. It's more than just your scores and more than your rotations. You have to get active in research and don't do research just for the sake of getting publications. Get get into research to understand, really, you know, work hard, because when you learn more, you become a better doctor, and that way you can talk about your projects more passionately. Mm -hmm. That was something that came up in my interview. One of my, the where I matched, my program director, they asked me about this one paper, and I told them because I was very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. I wrote on the value of mentorship, and I have been a mentor and a teacher prior to becoming a doctor, so that was something that was very true and authentic to me, so that's mm -hmm. something you know, I would really, really emphasize know your application, but also speak of things which are true to yourself. And fourthly, I think it just comes down to the fact, definitely reach out to your mentors as well. You know, there's this wonderful platform I recommend and encourage everyone to join Twitter. Definitely seek out opportunities, you know, uh, uh, post a picture of yourself on Twitter and be like, hi, my name is XYC. I am a graduate from XYC University and I'm interested in, in internal medicine or psychiatry or radiology and would love to connect with peers. Definitely connect with mentors. Find out papers that you really enjoy reading. Send them honest, you know, emails. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed reading this. I'm interested in applying. I have been following your work. I would love for the opportunity to have you to mentor me. Some may respond, you know, some may not, and some may just be like, I don't have time, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. you know, everyone is very busy. So if someone is going to make time out for you, appreciate your teachers. Always, always appreciate and respect your teachers. And above all, I think this is something that a lot of internationals can also try to do is that there's this misconception that you can only get training programs if you can apply for the main residency, but there's the alternative pathways for a couple of residency programs as well. This is uh, an option for those graduates who want to pursue the residencies in the United States, but have financial deficits or have some issues with visa. If you are able to secure and complete your residency from your own home countries in certain project in certain parts of the world and complete your USMLE examinations, you can apply for fellowships here in the United States as well. And those are relatively more easier to get than residency itself. Mm -hmm. Secondly, while you are doing your fellowship, you're in the American healthcare system. That way you can even apply for residency again. So I know a couple of people who have done this. They came here, 
they applied for, they had done their home country residencies. They were completing their one or two fellowships and then they applied for residency and mm -hmm. now they are completing their residency. So I think always keep options in the back of your mind is probably the last piece of advice. Be open-minded. Don't be afraid to look at alternative options. Be focused towards what you want to do. And above all, always be very, very kind and humble in this journey to not only everyone you meet, but also be kind to yourself as well. Because it's a long journey and it's only going to get tougher, but you become stronger with time as well. Dr. Malik, this has been an amazing interview. And I can see that I know you're going to be a future mentor to um, those coming up in the field, just based on my interview with you. Um, I can tell that you're a compassion. I can tell that you are passionate about what you're doing in this medical field. And we need more doctors like you. So again, congratulations. I only know and expect the best things from you. And um, I'm pretty sure your residency program is more than thrilled to have you. So congratulations and good luck on the remainder of your journey. Thank you so much, Tiffany.